watching Cycle Cruises all on one motorcycle channel. Subscribe today. So I bought this cargo van that I plan on turning into a camp out bug out vehicle. So I can bug out with my motorcycle. You are watching my bug out van build series. Hey be sure to check out my bug out van build series. Video links are in the description section of this video. Hey folks, I'm going to be doing an inverter install with you today, but before I do that, I want to give you an update and let you know I did return that 1000 watt inverter, not because I had any problems with it, but because I wanted to upgrade to a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter so that I can add a microwave and an induction burner, which use over 1000 watts. Uh, so I decided to go with this 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter, not only because it was cheap, which could be a bad thing in the future, but I'll let you guys know and give you updates, but because it had a voltmeter and also had a meter to let you know exactly how much power you were using with the appliance that you plugged in, which can be beneficial, as you'll see uh, later in this video. First step is to check the manual and see exactly what size cable and fuse we'll need for my particular application. Now I'll be utilizing less than 1500 watts for my particular setup. So all I need is a 2 gauge cable and a 200 amp fuse. So I decided to pick up these two 2 gauge cables off of Amazon. I couldn't get a black cable because they didn't have the correct ring size. Make note, make sure to get a cable with the correct ring size that will fit your inverter and battery terminals. And I picked up that fuse block and those fuses off of Amazon. I, I get everything from Amazon. I'll include links in the info section of this video. And here's the inverter out of the box placed on my battery box to see exactly where I want to put it. And this is where I want to put it. By the way, when I use my induction burner and microwave, which uses the most power, I will have the bed up so that this uh, inverter gets adequate airflow because I know these suckers get really hot. Okay, let's mock it up here on the battery box. And that's exactly where I want to put the fuse block. Okay, so now it's time to go ahead and cut the positive cable. And I just use a trimmer. Uh, cut it right in half, no problem. Now we'll need to strip the end, which I use a utility knife. Try not to cut too deep because you don't want to cut any strands. Uh, you cut around it and then you just take some pliers and pull the end off. Comes right off, no problem. Next, insert the cable into one end of the fuse blocks. Make sure it fits okay. And it fits okay. Okay, now we'll open the battery box up. I'm going to attach uh, the positive lead to one battery and the negative lead to the other battery. So that way it utilizes both batteries evenly. You never want to just connect it to one battery because it will use that battery more than the other. At least that's what I was told. Okay, next we'll install the 200 amp fuse. As you see, it's very simple and straightforward. You just put it on the post there and tighten it down. Next, very simply attach the ground wire to the negative post on the inverter. And then attach the positive cable from the fuse block. And this is what it all looks like when you're done. And just put the cover on the fuse block. And now we'll go ahead and install the inverter on the battery box. Okay, now we'll go ahead and flip the switch and turn it on and see if it works. Voila, it works. And it shows I have 13.2 volts on the inverter's voltmeter with zero watts being used because I have nothing plugged in. Okay, so now we'll plug in the 1300 watt induction burner and see if it really works. Okay, I'll set the induction burner to boil, which is, I believe, like the highest setting. And immediately the fans come on the induction burner, which I wasn't expecting. And also the fans come on immediately on the inverter. And as you see, the induction burner only uses 1,150 watts on its boil setting, which surprises me because this is a 1,300 watt induction burner. As you see, the fans stay on the inverter as long as the induction burner is plugged in and turned on, uh, which I don't know if the fans will stay on. If I cut it to a lower setting, I'll have to check that out later. But at that time, I didn't test it on its lower setting. Touching my hand in the pot, this burner heats up real fast. That's what I love about induction burners. Okay, now let's plug in my so-called 600 watt microwave, which actually uses more watts than it lists. As you can see there, it's using 980 watts while I have it running. As you see, the inverter fans come on with the microwave as expected. Okay, now I went ahead and plugged in my low wattage LED TV. And as you can hear, no fans come on. Okay, I'll go ahead and cut the TV off and cut the inverter off. 
Uh, but before I do that, as you see, I'm at 12.8 volts on the inverter with the inverter on. Now that I cut the inverter off, uh, my solar meter says I'm at 13.3 volts. So I'm at full charge still with the batteries, even after using the induction burner and microwave with the 2000 watt inverter. So it looks like this pure sine wave 2000 watt inverter works like it should. And let's hope it holds up. By the way, I did get some wire concealer tube and I cleaned up a lot of those cables so it looks much better as always links to all items shown in this video are located in the description and comment section of this video thank you for watching and until next time I'll catch you all later make sure to stay tuned for more bug out van build videos Welcome to Psycho Cruises Click the Go links. Just click on the pictures below to go to my recommended videos and my social media sites. Also, don't forget to visit my blog and store at psychocruiser.com. If you have any trouble clicking on these links, they are also provided in the info section of this video. Thank you and subscribe today. Check out my new channel where I talk about anything and everything, not just motorcycle related. Psycho Cruiser Motor Vlog.